NBC stands by. At this time, we bring you a special program telling the story of the National Broadcasting Company's preparations for invasion. This is Robert St. John. On the night of Tuesday, March the 28th of this year, the shortwave receiver at RCA Communications San Francisco crackled into sound. From somewhere far out in the Pacific, a test call was coming through. Hello, Frisco. Hello, Frisco. Can you hear me? This is George Folster on the edge of Toraquino Perimeter calling San Francisco for a broadcast at 2320 GMT. Report, please. This is San Francisco calling George Folster. Your signal good. Keep testing. Where? Where did he say he was calling from? Sounded like Torrequino Perimeter. What the heck he did? That's in the middle of the Bougainville jungle. That's front line. Hello, Frisco. Folster calling. I'm moving along the perimeter. Wires are being played out as we go. Now I'm going to sit on this log overlooking Jap territory. I'm resting and giving you Numia time and checking proper relay. Son of a gun. Hello, Folster. This is Frisco. You'd better look under that log before you sit down. Stand by for time check. The time is now... 6,000 miles away on Bougainville Island in the South Pacific, NBC's George Foster was making radio history, preparing for the first live broadcast of World War No. 2, which would depict frontline action of American ground forces. Keep moving, George. I got you covered. Keep your eyes open and your stomach close to the ground. Covered by the rifle of a young Signal Corps officer, Folster crept slowly toward the farthest advanced pillbox at Torokino. Another officer advanced with him, playing out a fine, almost invisible combat wire. Watch it to the left, Folster. Uh-uh. Landmine. Sidestepping landmines and booby traps, they moved steadily ahead. Mud-covered, war-weary soldiers looked on curiously and with amazement from the shelter of foxhole and pillbox. This is it, as far as we can go. You see the Major back there in our transmitter? Yep. And there's a signal for you. Go to it, Folster. You're on the air. And the broadcast began from the very spot where shortly before, one of the bloodiest battles of the whole South Pacific had taken place. Even while Folster spoke, firing began again. Well, there is a steady light arms fire to our left. I don't know what it is, but it's too close. The, uh, the suspense here is unimaginable. It's time to step back. Now I switch you to NBC in London. Hey, what's that you said? Hey, you have scared the life out of me jumping out of that foxhole. Hey, get a load of this guy. He's nuts. Way out here in his lousy place and with me own ears, I just heard him call it London. What do you know? And a poor son of a gun. Thus did George Folster contribute another to the long list of NBC firsts in radio news coverage of the war. And today, as the world awaits the United Nations invasion on one or perhaps a dozen major fronts, NBC stands by to cover invasion news with the same accuracy and daring which distinguished Folster's broadcast of fighting in Bougainville. During the next...